We're going to have to do that with software, right? There's been a big CRISPR breakthrough. Um, 65 year old man named Patrick Doherty uh, was suffering with a, a, a disease in which his protein was misshaped, misshapen, uh, building up in his body, destroying important tissues, uh, such as nerves, in his hands and feet. He watched the same disease kill his dad. Uh, and here's the quote had watched others get crippled and die difficult deaths uh, from this disease. And it's a terrible prognosis. He entered a trial utilizing CRISPR, the gene editing uh, tool, and researchers reported the data indicating that the experiment treatment worked well. The study Doherty volunteered for is the first in which doctors are simply infusing the gene editor directly into patients and letting it find its own way to the right gene in the right cells, in this case, the cells in the liver, uh, making the destructive protein. The advance is being held not just as, not just for amyloid doses patients but also as a proof of concept that CRISPR could be used to treat many other much more common diseases it's a new way of using the innovative technology to my thoughts i think this is a really important breakthrough and what it allows us to do now is see a world where look if you if you think about the um, two different paths of the following idea you're going to make a solution to a problem if if the problem was um, an internet company or you wanted to make a product, what you would do is you would go to Amazon Web Services, you'd be able to consume a whole set of abstractions, and then you would build a light amount of programming, which was essentially like the application logic of your app, right? I think a lot of people listening understand that idea because that's what they do. Here, what we're getting to a place is now soon, we're going to be able to view biological problems in the same way. So we're building all these small little building, I don't want to call them small, but building these very important building blocks that is very much akin to the building blocks we needed to put together the first set of computers to put together MS DOS, all of that allowed us to create Windows, Windows allowed us to actually access the internet. And there was this in seriatim development of things that happened. And I think that we're on the verge of that. And that's what these kinds of breakthroughs really show us, which is that you can view. So for example, you know, in a different company, um, they, they've created these mRNA gate arrays, logic gate arrays. So if you're, you know, a chip designer, you would understand how to basically create electrical function in part using, you know, gate arrays. But if you reduce a biological function to the same idea, now that same person has a translational ability to solve a different problem that they didn't have before. So I think what we're saying is that we're seeing this platformization, this AWSification of a biological tool chain with things like CRISPR and all of the other modalities that need to stack on top of it so that the next person can view it as a programming problem. And I think that that's a really exciting path that accelerates a lot of this development. But this was an enormously important breakthrough because it validated a lot of what CRISPR was beyond a lot of theoretical innovation that that up until now was basically what it was known for. And a lot of investment had gone into companies that were trying to do things, uh, but this was the first really important one. The, the funny thing about Intelli is that it's been public for like seven, eight years, and it's just been toiling, 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 and then. You know, the last little while, obviously, it's gone absolutely crazy because of this breakthrough. Yeah, and related new in related news, CRISPR creates its first genetically modified marsupials after years of using the gene editing technique, CRISPR to genetically modify everything from vegetables to lab rodents. Researchers have used it to edit one of the hardest target jets, marsupials. The MIT Technology reports. Uh, I guess it turns out they're very hard to edit, and we're now editing marsupials and changing things like their hair color. So brave new world. Freeberg was here. The Freeberg ratio would be off the charts. All right, wrapping up, we have pretty incredible. Just, just one thing to add to that. Yeah. I mean, I think what it what it shows is that these COVID vaccines are just the first product, the first breakthrough product of this mRNA technology. There's going to be a lot more. And what I wonder about is, you know, this this category of vaccine hesitant people. They're kind of like, you know, in the in the technology world, you have kind of a spectrum of early adopters, late adopters. Luddites, you know, people are actively against Laggers. technology. Yeah, well, I mean, Luddites are even Laggards more, and then Luddites, yeah. Yeah, Luddites are even more violently opposed. I think the original Luddites, um, they, I think the original Luddites were in England. They lost their jobs at some factory, and so they broke into the factory with sledgehammers to destroy all the machines that had replaced their jobs. So yeah. there's clearly a spectrum. And what I wonder about is that if you're on sort of the Luddite end of the spectrum with respect to biotechnology, I mean, are you going to have a materially worse life because you're not getting the benefits of all these vaccines and all these treatments? 
And I mean, COVID could just be the first example of this. Well, I mean, if you build on it, it's sort of like we're going to create a two class society, one that is not only dealing with all the maladies and cancers and, and living longer. But we haven't even started to think about well, taking somebody who's already in great health, and what can you do for them? So oh, you know what, uh, you can be two inches taller, you could add 10 IQ points, you could run faster, you could have higher blood oxygen, whatever. I mean, we could we could genetically modify people to stay underwater for 10 minutes uh, and be you know better processors of oxygen like other mammals are you could have superhumans i mean that that's basically where this is going and there, that unlocks a whole nother level of ethical and moral considerations but you're right there could be a group of people who are like i don't want to touch any of this and they die at 60 70 80 years old and then we got another class of people who embrace this and they have 20 more iq points <laughs> and yeah. they live to 120. No, I mean, it's it sounds funny, but and like science fiction, but that is in the realm of possibility in our lifetimes. There's a lot of great know. science fiction written about this whole sort of transhumanist um, idea. A, a, a book series I really like is uh, Nexus by Ramez Nam, uh, mm -hmm. who actually was a developer at Microsoft and you know, then became a writer. And he writes with, I'd say, a high degree of sort of accuracy, accuracy and specificity about these technologies and how they might evolve. Um, yeah, people Jason, should be sure to check out that book. Jason, be honest. If if you could actually increase anything in your body through this gene editing, what would it be? Just <laughs> throw, throw anything out there. But the first thing Just that comes to mind. Anything out there? Anything I out would there, increase whatever. my muscle mass 100%. Increase my muscle mass. By so the way, there's the a percentage of fat would go down, not in reality, in absolute terms, but just in percentages. So this CRISPR thing was uh, a public company called Intellia Therapeutics. Um, but uh, I want to throw a shout out to another startup that seemingly I think may have had a breakthrough this week called Form Energy. And the reason why these guys are interesting is that they've built this incredibly massive long duration battery out of iron. Now, why is that important? We have really simple ways of harvesting iron from the earth. It is literally everywhere. Everywhere you look, iron exists. It's not so true for nickel. It's not true for cobalt. It's not true for manganese. It's not true for lithium. It's not true for all of these other specialty chemicals that we need in order to build batteries. But these guys have solved a very complicated technical challenge that will allow you to store energy cheaply, which has huge implications for electricity and grids. And so big shout out to these guys at Form, uh, because if, if, if it looks like what they said they did is true, it's a really important breakthrough that'll have some important uh, ramifications. It's, it's amazing, by the way, to see progress. No, you wake up and you read these things and you're just like, God, this is incredible that there are people working away on shit that really matters. It's almost as if there's like one group of people, we talked about cynicism in a previous episode recently. There's one group of people, whether you're in the founder circles or capital allocator or a journalist covering this space uh, who understands it, there, there is a, a technical, you know, explosion going on here, an innovation that is going to solve a lot of problems. And they have another group of people who think that all these problems are intractable. I'm kind of looking at this, you know, what happened with COVID. And I was talking to my wife about global warming. And I was like, feels to me like we can solve global warming. Like, feels like it's very much in our control. And there's another group of people who feel like it's over and don't have kids because the whole planet's going to go on well, fire. We're, I mean, uh, I think Elon tweeted this out. Um, and I think we've talked about this now with respect to China.